In this week's episode, we're going to be talking to a good friend and phenomenal business builder, a friend of mine named Ryan McKinsey. I've known Ryan for about four years now. The company that he's currently building is a company called True Earth. Over the last 20 months that he's taken this company from zero to over 180 employees. Prior to doing this, Ryan was in the subscription box space, but we're not going to be here to talk about that. We're going to be talking about how they went from that entire industry being in the subscription box space to being the number two fastest growing startup in all of Canada doing the numbers that they're doing. I don't want to spoil anything for you, so let's go inside and have a chat with Ryan. Sweet. So this episode, like I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be talking to one of my good friends that I've known for, what, four years now? Yeah, I think about four years. We, met, we live in Vancouver, but we met in San Diego. Ryan, thanks for coming on this week's episode. Oh, thanks for having me. So I've known Ryan prior to this brand that he's built recently. And re by recently, it's been 20 months for those of you that have seen it around uh, the internet or in by your influencers, etc. But we're going to kind of jump into it and let get to know Ryan a little bit more and kind of what he's built because he's you've been in the direct response space a long time. Yeah, on and off for probably 20 years, but heavily for probably like last five. Okay, yeah. so 20 years. So what, what made you get into it? Tell us a little bit about your background prior to all of this craziness that we call marketing today. Yeah, I mean, I actually, to be honest, I wasn't always in direct response. I was just kind of involved with being an entrepreneur and, and marketing and whatnot. And I'm sure you're similar, like as a kid, having lemonade stands and coming up with different random business ideas from like when I was like 14, we were trying to put together this bike trail app. And this isn't like iPhone app time. This is like 1995 when we were building <laughs> Windows <this>. 95? Yeah, <laughs> Windows 95, like trying to make software that we could sell and you know, yeah. never, nothing ever happened. But yeah. back in the early 2000s, kind of got involved with creating kind of like funny, funny websites, like funny videos, jokes, funny pictures, yeah. and relying on like advertising and stuff like that. Yeah. And the advertising market's kind of wavered over the years and we eventually got into creating this platform where people could, could contribute content yep. uh, kind of in the, like the seo days and uh, basically the idea was everybody would would create content we would share 75 percent of the revenue with them and the volume of content would would generate tons of traffic from google okay. and we would monetize that and that that did really well and then that led to getting into media space. Yeah. So magazines, more digital digital content. And then as you probably know, a lot of magazines are struggling with sales in retail. So we kind of got into creating like subscription boxes and, and digital products around outdoor adventure. Yeah. And that, that did really well. And then eventually we had this opportunity come our way, which about 20 is, months ago. it came a little bit longer than 20 months ago, but Brad, who's the, the CEO of our company, his family friend basically had access to to the patent. He'd invested in it and huh. uh, said, "Hey, let's do something with this and see if it works." That's and sick. yeah, here we are. It's just interesting because you've technically taken something and you've influenced their life. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, like I think if you can wrap your brand around yeah. influencing somebody's like day-to-day -day decisions yeah. and and how they see themselves and people like you know they wear specific brands apple watches whatever yeah. because they want people to perceive them a certain way and they also have how they perceive themselves so if yeah. you can if you can you know i'm not trying to be manipulative here yeah. but if you can become that much a part of somebody's life that they're that they identify with your product they, they're never going to want to leave yeah. and you know i mean obviously part of it is making sure that you provide value for them yeah. so that it, it's valuable to, for them to continue participating. But like, if you can, if you can make people connect their identity with your brand, it's game over. It's game over. It's, it's, it's just easy to grow. And that's kind of what you guys have done with this brand. So obviously you transitioned from building that, building um, Explore Magazine, got really, really good in terms of e-commerce, direct sales and direct response. So when, what was your biggest point where you realized like this online D2C thing is going to be a massive career of mine? I just know that I've always, I'm always going to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. I was always going to be an entrepreneur. It's yeah. not something that like I, I arbitrarily decided when I was, you know, 25 or then wake up one day like yeah. I'm going to make a decision in my life and change this. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, this was what I was going to be doing since I was a little kid. Yeah. 
I took a couple of days off at Christmas yeah. here, and like, and then you're still itching to get back. Yeah, to work. by like, I think I took about ten days off. With like, I worked three days in the middle. Yeah. By like day ten, I was like, I was like having mental health issues with creativity. <laughs> that I'm not even joking, man. I, I you can ask my wife. Yeah. I was like, I needed to do something that was like had creative output for me, and I'm not like a painter. Yeah. So this is because you're, you're you're technically with the CMO of True Earth. Yeah. So you're constantly thinking of unique ways and we're always chatting on WhatsApp at like 1 a.m. in the morning, like <laughs> what's working for you, what's not, et cetera. But it's like you're always trying, because that's your creative output. Yeah. It's just figuring out a way to get this product in more people's hands because you're making a bigger influence and helping change their lives too. For sure, yeah. So let's transition a little bit and talk about True Earth for a second here. Sure. So you said the CEO of your company knew the guy that had the patent to this product. Yep. So how did that all come up, come about to be? Yeah. So. I think they were at a dinner party and, you know, when dinner parties were allowed yeah. and it wasn't COVID. Pre-COVID. Pre-COVID. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they were at a dinner party and his family members, name's Lance, they had heard what we were doing with some subscription products and stuff like that. And he threw it out there. He's like, I've invested in this, the patent for this product. Yeah. And I uh, think you guys might be, you know, a good fit to do something like the, the Dollar Shave Club yeah. kind of thing. And Brad had brought a test and we were kind of like, yeah, it seems like a decent idea. I, I, don't, I don't know that much about laundry detergent at the time. Yeah. And it seems like it would be difficult to sell something like this, yeah. D to C. I don't know, let's think about it. And then time went on. And at the time I'm kind of like, I didn't believe that the product yeah. would, would work. Like, you know, it's a strip. Like, how is that gonna cl clean my clothes? Yeah. And then uh, my kids and I were watching YouTube one morning and they're like one of those unboxing shows. Yeah. And they're like unboxing this treasure chest. It was like Ryan's Boy Reviews. I'm not going to say what show it is, <laughs> but it r might rhyme with uh, Brian's Boy Reviews. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they were unwrapping this plastic yeah. chest and it yeah. was like, it was wrapped in plastic. The chest was plastic. There was like a tray with like a whole bunch of little plastic toys that were wrapped in plastic and the toy was plastic and then they pulled Constantly. it Constantly. I was just like, and there's like this pile of garbage next to it afterwards. I'm like, what is, what are we, what is this world coming to? And like, yeah. you've got a, you've got a, a new daughter and like, yeah. I'm assuming that you probably get these kind of vibes too, but like new Dude. dad vibes, right? Yeah. Like, it's completely different. What? Yeah, it's weird, yeah. right? It changes your DNA to a certain point. Yeah. You're like worrying like, what, what are my kids going to do for a living? Is there going to be enough food? Are we going to be yeah. overpopulated? Is the world going to be? Is she going to actually see what the normal world is like? Cause she was born into this entire COVID environment. Yeah. Like there's yeah. so many, so many things. And like, all these things kind of clicked in my head. Like I was having this anxiety for a while. I started looking into plastic waste and I'm like, this is crazy. So I called Brad and let's bring in that laundry detergent that we talked about before. And like, let's just see if it works. Cause I think, I don't know, this is killing me. Like yeah. I gotta do something. I can't just virtue signal that I'm, I'm stressed out about the future. So I uh, brought it in we tried it. We're all like, holy smokes. I can't believe how well this stuff Work. works. And yeah. I, you tried it. Like yeah. it's, it. My wife swears by it now. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up testimonial. She's like, I'm never buying laundry detergent again. It's wild, right? Yeah. So yeah, we, Kevin, Kevin, uh, he's our CTO. Okay. We asked him like, Hey, can you, uh, spin up a site for us. We have our own platform that we built. Uh, it's like a SaaS called uh, The Machine. We just decided that if we can sell 150 of these in a month, then I think it's, you know, a viable that's product. a viable product. Let's yeah. give it a, let's give it our best college shot. And we sold more than 1500 in the in first, first month. month. In the first month. So yeah, we 10 X our projections projected like yeah. win number. And, uh, and we kind of always do that with any new business that we start. We're pretty ruthless about it. We'll set a number and if we don't hit it, yeah. we, we scrap it and can it you got it like you yeah. can't be emotionally tied to things yeah. lots of lessons learned between then and now but now we're you know more than a hundred thousand subscribers, subscribers. Yeah, which um, is huge. I think just to the laundry detergent that's crazy so yeah. you, you took that on you were at explore while you were doing this entire thing now before we get into the laundry world and the difference that it's making because one of the things that you mentioned earlier is you know we all of us get started in the entrepreneurial world from one thing we're money focused. Yeah. Then we get to a point where money hits a limit and then you're like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Like, yeah. what, what's all this money for? It doesn't even make that big of a difference anymore anyways. Yeah. And I just keep chasing the next big goal. And while it's good to have revenue goals for the company because that just correlates to difference being made, but if you focus on the difference being made first, the revenue just kind of brings itself. So it's kind of something that you mentioned earlier was when we were just chatting off camera was, you're not more focused on the difference that you're making with this product. Yeah, it's the impact, right? Um, I'm, I'm really good and I'm sure you are too at like chasing shiny things oh, 100%. and you know, filling my calendar until I don't have any time left. Like we ran through the, our accountability chart a couple, you know, months ago and I, I was doing the job of 12 people. Damn. Like 
I'm probably not doing the job yeah. of 12 people doing the job well, yeah. but I'm doing the job of 12 people and- uh, Just pinging all over the yeah, place. Just yeah, just doing way too much stuff like all the time. And like in the past, when I was doing similar volumes of work, you get, you get to the point where you're burnt out or you're, you're stressed or you're overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And like you said, like it's like, I would almost get depressed and I'd be like, why am I putting myself through this all the, the time? time. Yeah. Because I'm not doing anything different with any extra money that I'm getting, yeah. you know, and I'm, I'm notorious for just like taking any profit that I have and, and putting it back into the company. So it's not like I'm like, you know, living high on the hog or, or yeah. changing my lifestyle. All I'm doing is just like, like giving myself more work. The more work I get, the more work I, it's like compound yeah. work interest. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I would get, I would go through phases where I'm like, I think I'm done with this, or I'm getting close to being done with this. Yeah. And then, because it's like, what's it all for? And then when we switched to doing something, so like our big mission is to eliminate plastic. It was originally to eliminate 700 million plastic laundry jugs a year that end up in landfills in North America. It's about 30% of them are able to be recycled in some capacity. Yeah. So our goal was originally, Big Harry goal was to try to eliminate as much of that as possible. Now we switch to just trying to elim eliminate plastic from the kitchen, the bathroom, and the laundry room. We've eliminated like, excuse me, somewhere around 2.6 million bottles so far, which is huge. That's insane. Yeah, and, we're, and we've donated over 4 million loads of laundry detergent to, to those in, in need through, through COVID and, yeah. and stuff here. Now, when I'm overwhelmed, I get to think about like, what am I doing this for? That doesn't really come into my head because I know that this is gonna have an impact on my kids' lives, on my kids' kids' lives, on your kids' lives. Um, and it's a lot easier to be comfortable being uncomfortable when what you're, you're doing, yeah, impact. there's a bigger impact, right? Yeah. So, it's, so uh, yeah. taking impact to that world, um, you guys made a big difference in Canada, specifically, obviously. Now, what's the big next big impact in terms of what's the next big goal going? I'm guessing global. Yeah, so we're yeah we're we're in Canada. And we're in about 50 countries right now. Yeah. Uh, maybe 55. I can't remember exactly, yeah. but right now we're expanding uh, to have like full on distri proper distribution, like yeah. an in country fulfillment. Uh, and not not just through like three PLs, but yeah. like we've got partners in different countries. Like we're launching the UK nice. in a couple of weeks. We already have thousands of customers in the yeah. UK, but but like direct. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna have a better experience where they don't have to pay uh, duty yeah. um, if if sometimes it happens, um, and they'll get faster for faster. We'll fa see the product better. So yeah, uh, yeah basically we're working on uh, expansion to all those a like, bunch of different countries, um, and that, that's the big thing on the forefront. And then. We've got, uh, we've had this multi-surface cleaner out for about a month now, but we've uh, officially got our Canadian DIN, which is like the Canadian government's regulatory number or approval for- uh, Being called a disinfectant. Classifying it as a disinfectant. So we're hoping that does well. It was picked up fairly decently, okay. even without being classified as a disinfectant. Okay. Um, so we're hoping that, you know- with Because that, you started with the core product that actually made a big difference and people thought if that's gotta be that good, yeah. No matter what you launch now moving forward, you've got that avid buying audience that's going to yeah. buy everything that you have to, to share. As long as you don't mess up and release something that's the, Yeah, which is which we've seen a few companies do in our day and specifically in this industry. So tell us in terms of, obviously, so you started with there. From what it looks like, you've got the scented ones, you've got fragrance free and baby. Yeah. That's a big market. And we were t chatting about this with the, with the video team on the way here about like the baby market. Just that, that's market's never going to go away. Yeah, people, people. People have babies all the time, all the time, <laughs> sometimes by accident, yeah. sometimes on purpose. Um, sometimes because of COVID. Sometimes, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of co I'm sure COVID's going to be a name for babies. Yeah, um, yeah that, that product actually came from uh, there was a lot of people asking if uh, the fragrance free Would was, work for was suitable for babies. We were getting so many questions about it that we decided to to specifically make a baby, baby version line. of the product. Yeah. Uh, the actual formula is pretty much the same as the unscented. Yeah. It, it just basically uh, gave people a little bit more um, confidence that this was designed specifically for babies. And this happened, you see this a lot in like CPG stuff. Like yeah. if you look at like olive oil sprays yeah. or like oil sprays, like Pam, I've, I've noticed this when I was shopping for oil a long time ago, but they'll be like, there'll be like just different uses for them, but it's yeah. the same product. Product it's across just, the it's board. Just, it's just the, the packaging is made so that it communicates to the audience better. Better, yeah. So it's, it's not as big as the other products, but we, we have thousands of subscribers to it. So what did you, so from a marketing perspective, a lot of my audience comes because of the marketing background that I have. So from a marketing perspective, what have you guys done that has worked really, really well? And what have you, let's start with what has not worked. Growing this company as fast as you have in mm -hmm. not even two years. 
What has been some of your biggest growing pains that most businesses wouldn't wouldn't even fathom seeing? The biggest stuff I would say that's tied to, tied to, to growth that's been challenging um, outside of like structural things like managing customer service. Um, you know, when you when you're processing like 2,000 plus orders a day, yeah. um, there, there's there's a lot of customer service requests. Um, that's one, especially before we didn't have a self-serve way to actually pause or cancel your account. You had to send a message to customer service. Yeah. And like, the re we, we just didn't have a perfect backend to do that before. Yeah. And that's frustrating for the customer. Yeah. Uh, it's frustrating for customer service. It's, I mean, it's basically frustrating. It backlogs for, the whole customer service just for simple totally, questions that they could be dealing with. Totally, so um, that was, I would say that was a challenge uh, is not having the best cancellation customer yeah. experience. Um, another thing is when we first launched, we didn't have frequency options. So uh, you, you basically could buy the product month to month. Yeah. And you know, one thing we overlooked there was that like, if I live by myself, yeah. 32 loads of laundry, even if I do, you know, four loads of laundry a week, like if I wash my, if I wash my outfit almost every day and wash my, my, my sheets, you know, yeah. it's going to last me a while. And what was happening in my eyes was that the people that didn't need the high frequency, they're starting to get the package piling up. And every single time they went and looked in their cupboard, they were seeing, oh, I gotta cancel, I gotta cancel this, I gotta cancel this. And you don't want somebody thinking that about your brand. And by the time they get like five or six packages and they haven't canceled it yet, they're gonna be like, oh my God, I need to, I gotta- Just get it canceled. I, I'm gonna cancel this yeah. and I'm never gonna get it again. Like it's just, you, cause now they associate, they have all this like dissonance tied to your brand. Yeah. So those are the two, the two biggest things that I would say it would be like, uh, if you're offering a product that is consumable, you need to make sure that you offer different frequencies and different volumes because everybody has different needs. Yeah. And I noticed that as soon as we started offering different frequency options, yeah. the lifetime value on the different cohorts yeah. was significantly higher because you know people are dragging down dragging down the, the LTV or the lifetime value by canceling early or, or you know not being set up with something that they need. And then the second thing is what I just mentioned a minute ago, like not letting people have the option to cancel yeah. because if it is difficult for them to cancel or they have a bad experience when they run out of laundry detergent or whatever the, the consumable is and they want to get more, they're not going to come back to you to get more. Because they're in the subconscious mind thinking about the bad experience they had to yeah. already. Yeah. Like that sucked. I'm not doing that again. Yeah. But if they can go and pause it or whatever uh, and they know it's an easy, an easy change, then they can just go and flick it back on again. Yeah. Turn it right back on and boom, in seven to 10 days, yeah. whatever your shipping options are. Which is pretty cool because, you know, even I see this, and this is something that I, I wish Amazon took on a lot more because I buy supplements all the time on Amazon. But it's like the only option for them is every single month. Yeah. But it's like they don't realize like one bottle sometimes can last 60, 90 days. It's like just give someone the option because that in itself is like now I'm just like, fuck, I'll just go buy it whenever I want to buy it. Yeah. I'm not going to think of buying it. And then sometimes someone will send me a bottle to try it and I've that brand that's on Amazon has just lost another sale because of totally. frequency. Um, so what's worked specifically really well? Because you guys have done phenomenal on the video side. Yeah. Because um, you guys do a lot of uh, funny video kind of yep. what the cliche Harmon Brothers style commercials. So tell us like from regular marketing that people think from an e-commerce side to you know doing things that's outside of the box to doing to even you, you mentioned earlier you were doing you're testing out uh, direct mail. Yeah. So you're doing offline, not just online. So yeah. it's like, what's kind of the trajectory of your, of your marketing campaign being the CMO of yeah. the company? I think a lot of people get so focused on what's working and then switching from this thing working to this thing, to this thing, to yeah. this thing. And like, I'm gonna use a stupid quote from good to great, but they never yeah. create a proper flywheel. Yeah. And like, I think what allows us to be successful is we'll find a tactic that that works yeah. and is winning we'll build standard operating procedures around it yeah. and then we'll have somebody on the team run run that run that one flywheel. specific thing yeah. and then we'll move on we'll add that we'll, we'll we'll test find other flywheels and we're we're not just focused on just media buying yeah. we're not just focused on uh you know just influencer marketing yeah. or macro or micro you know, we take everything, and like, this is another unpopular opinion uh, that's very popular, I guess, kind of with Agora folks, is that we take all of our spend, yeah. and we blend it against all new customers for the day, and we have our target CPAs. Like, I know okay. we, we use like the attribution on, on each individual channel yeah. as a compass, yeah. but- You blend it right across that. Yeah, yeah, everybody's like, oh man, this Facebook ad, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not working for me. I'm only getting like, 1.6 row as or whatever the heck it is, but people forget that that's also now potentially driving people who have blogs 
to write about your product. You're not you're take, not taking into account the people that are going to go and post it on social media, the yeah. referral traffic, like like the organic shares, the organic, everything. Yeah. Yeah. And and they're like, oh well, that came from organic that sale. Well, mm -hmm. that sale came from organic because this person bought the product from your Facebook okay. ad, came back around and did this thing, and like. And like even like you know you can't track the Amazon sales that come from your Facebook ad. You can't track if you're in retail. You can't track those. Well, sales. and it's funny because running an agency and a multi-network agency at its best is like multi-network attribution is the biggest tough, the, the toughest thing for us to crack. Yeah. Like the software is like Hyros and stuff that we promote and we're pretty big affiliates of. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like one Facebook ad could lead to so many different sales that you would never find out. Totally. But people look at the ROAS back on that original one sale. So it's like, I like the fact that you guys do a blended based on the day, yeah. which is completely different. And there, and there are like longer out there, you know, there's there's these delayed attribution, or yeah. there's delayed attribution that happens afterwards because there's other things too. Like, you know, you get email, you get email addresses yeah. that might not make a sale for six months. Yeah. You get uh, like for us, we have a fundraising program. We might get some fundraising leads. We might get some small retail leads like it's just it's especially tough especially when you're working with an agency because people judge the agency on what they can see yeah. you know most agencies uh have a tendency to try to like be like well this is even even if a platform's like potentially stealing credit from something else yeah. they like to they like to sell it as, as much as possible yeah. they're obviously agencies are doing their job on that point but like the people that are working with agencies also need to look at the macro view like the big the big, the big picture, picture. Yeah. and look at things from like if you had an agency that's doing one specific thing like media buying, you also need to look at what was, is there brand lift? Or there's a whole bunch of other things that you can- The, that, the organic, the brand lift, yeah. the comments, the shares, the likes, the DMs, there's so many different things, the customer service yeah. questions that all came from the media buying that happened. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, then you had, cause like people look at Facebook and YouTube because those are the big guys, but now that, you know, with TikTok, TikTok's first click attribution only. Yeah which is wild, yeah. <laughs> right? You yeah. gotta think about that. Cause it's like, that in itself is like, if, and if an agency tried to focus their entire media buying on TikTok, you would have some serious fires to deal with on, on a monthly yeah. basis. Yeah. Cause your clients just couldn't wrap their head around that. Yeah, or even Snap Snapchat's like that too. Yeah. Like, like you're not gonna see Snapchat purchases properly in analytics. No. Because their, their weird native browser just doesn't pass information properly. All the way through, no. Yeah. But I still get hammered with your Snapchat ads at least <laughs> three times a day. Like, I'm not even kidding you. Like, without a doubt, at least three times a day, I'm getting nailed to your Snapchat ads. But it's, the one thing, when it comes to marketing, and I think you do a really, really good job from the, being the CMO of this brand is, you know, there's what I like to call when clients come to us and say, okay, we, you know, we're spending half a million a month or whatever, a year on Facebook, but I wanna go across multi-network. And I go, great, well, what does multi-network mean to you? Multi-network can mean just even adding direct response, like direct mail campaigns, that's multi-network. But from an on online perspective, you've got the foundation networks, like Facebook and YouTube is what I like to call the big foundation yeah. ones right now, because they're the big dogs. And then you got the ones that are sitting underneath, where you've got the Snapchat, the Pinterest, the TikTok, GDN native, et cetera. And you are pretty much across the board because you understand that all of it flows as an ecosystem versus one or the other. Totally. A lot of direct response marketers are focused on direct response, dollar in, two dollars out. Yeah. But when you add a brand to that and then you start doing marketing for the brand, it's completely different. Totally. So yeah. kind of let's talk, like shift marketing gears for a second. What has been, because before you came from just the typical KPI driven, let's build a, build a funnel, let's make sure it works. But yeah. now you're more brand driven. Mm -hmm. What is like? What has that transition been like? I didn't used to really believe in branding, and we kind of talked about this earlier. Yeah. I, I was just like, I'm going to create a product, I'm going to create a sales page or sales letter, uh, and we're going to test it, see if it works. If it doesn't work, we're going to change it. Yeah. And uh, you know, it doesn't need to look pretty. It doesn't need to look nice. Things don't need to be cohesive. Like the fonts can be all over the place. I just, I just didn't know, you know. And I had enough success there to think that that was right. Um, mm -hmm. And then when we started doing this it kind of became apparent that if you want people to trust you, um, people want consistency. A lo another laundry detergent brand that's well, well known. And yeah. you know, you went to their site and they've got all these specific fonts and these colors. And then they had a promo and the promo was like different colors, different fonts. You're gonna like wonder, are you being, is phishing happening? Are you being fished into like, you know. Different sites or something, scam? yeah. scam, like all these different things. So there's like, there's like all sorts of trust that, yeah. that come with the brand. But like more importantly, um, the, it's the brand story that really kind of brings the brand to life because most products are very commodified now. Like, yeah. you know, you, you launch something, it's original. 
if you launch something on Kickstarter before you're even off Kickstarter, somebody's already, already knocked you off. Yeah. You know, these knockoff brands typically are just selling on, on value proposition, yeah. on benefits, features, benefits, blah, 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 blah. But when you, when you can bring in like, you know, use something like uh, Donald Miller's uh, story brand, and it's yeah. a super simple formula. You know, you have your, your hero's journey type thing with like your villain. You make the, make the brand about the customer. Yeah. Like it, it, and it ba- back into the whole identity thing that yeah. we were talking about earlier. Building an, an, an identity around your product. Yeah, like mm-hmm. make people like want to associate with it, want to brag about it, want to tell people. There's so much leverage there, and especially like if you ever want like any business, even a direct response business, the the profits are in the back end. Yeah, it's always. In, yeah, it's in the secondary, always. third, whatever product. Third sales. Yeah. If you have a good experience with your brand initially. The, the, the stronger the brand vibe is and their identity tied to it, the easier it is to sell the other products to them in the future. Absolutely. Now, one thing that I'm starting to realize just on the agency side is like, you know, we're in a very competitive space. You're in a unique market because you've kind of created this whole market that you've kind of gone into is brand is what we noticed because for the first few years when we built the agency, it was called Rohan Shots Consulting. 2018 came, we moved into GrowRev. Yeah. GrowRev ended up becoming this flagship company that all info marketers and software companies and event-based companies work at. And now we've got brands coming to us because of the brand we built. Yeah. And we never actually ever focused on it for some weird, weird reason. Only when we sat down in Q4 of last year and looked at what made that big shift in 2019 and 2020 was the overall brand. But yeah. we were so focused on KPI, 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 that we completely didn't pay attention to what built our success. Yeah. So tell us moving forward, like what's some of the goals that you guys have with True Earth? You guys have some fun things that are work in the works coming out because you're going from, you know, the, I guess, what would this be called? The laundry space into bathroom space, I think. Our plan is like originally we were, you know, just trying to keep laundry jugs out of landfills. Yeah. And we think that there's a, a big enough market that we can go after helping reduce or eliminate plastic from households in uh, the bathroom, the yep. kitchen, and the laundry room. Yep. So those are gonna be, you know, over the next couple of years, those are gonna be our core focus on okay. on those those particular products. And, yep. you know, we have this multi-surface cleaner now that's disinfecting. Um, we have all the different laundry products. We have dryer balls. But yeah, it, that's that's kind of our goal. See, see how much, you know, how much plastic we can eliminate. And uh, it's insane. Like there's, like I said, there's, about a billion plastic jugs per year that North Americans use, and only about 30% of that can be recycled in any capacity. Like, I think about 10% of that can actually be repurposed into new plastic. That's the demand, crazy. The demand's so low, and then about 20% of it's actually burned for energy Which recapture. Is, yeah. It's a big problem. Yeah, and, and now you're focused on the problem. Yeah. And then creating the brand. Yeah. And helping millions yeah. of people at the same time scale. Yeah. yeah. So you guys have obviously got some serious accolades. You guys were, what, in BC's no, fastest growing company? Canada is se- Canada's second fastest growing company, uh, or for, sorry, fastest growing startup uh, in 2020. Second fastest growing startup in 2020? Yeah. Or fastest growing? Second fastest. Second. Who beat you? I think they, they sell steel. Okay. So, so it's kind of a tough comparison because yeah. we're selling a product that's like under $20 versus their, every one of their deals is probably a million bucks. A million bucks. But to compete against that, it's pretty huge and be number two to that. So you're technically number one in the D2C space. In Canada, I don't know. Maybe. He's like, I, I, I'm not going to take it, even though I am I, I, humble. Ryan, I'm not. I'm not going to say it, but yeah. I'll, 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 I'll let it like shower me. So one last thing, being the CMO, what makes you actually like tick on a day to day basis, like outside of like the brand and stuff, like you as a, you as a whole, like you as Ryan. I mean, my identity is wrapped up in this right now. I'm just, I just want to see this get to the next level. Um, I would love to be the largest D 2 C laundry detergent. In, in, in North America. Yeah. For me right now, it's just progress. Yeah. This is encompassing so much of my, my, my mental bandwidth yeah. um, that I like, I actually struggle to think about too much Outside else. of anything else. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, this year I'm, I'm actually focused on trying to balance out my, uh, my health and stuff a bit yeah. more, like get, get more exercise. Um, I was pretty good about moving a lot last year, yeah. um, but my diet, my diet Cause you're so, cause especially when you're in growth phase, everything is just one focus in growth phase. Yeah. Your, your entire, your body, your health, everything takes a massive, massive beating. In 2018, that happened to me. And it got to a point where I had like crazy naturopaths and stuff. So I feel you because I just shot my central nervous system. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's like, it doesn't matter how much, like if I, if I help save the planet or I help make a great future for my but kids. But if you don't take care of yourself. I don't take care of myself, then I can't be there for my kids. And I, I hope my kids would probably they, it's important for them to have a dad yeah. 
and you know it's it's easy to lose sight of taking care of yourself so um you know that that's always been a big part of my life in the past yeah. so trying to get back to that again while also like just structuring my day so that i can get do it so i can have it all oh yeah and it's it's huge that you say that because that was one of the things that you know early on even when i started it was so one track focused that everything else got ruined but then he's like, once that one thing gets ruined, now everything else matters even more. So yeah. you're filling a void with something else at all given time, so, which is huge. So Ryan, where can people find you? Where can people find your amazing product? Kind of you know, go on a little pitch. If you want to check out True Earth, you can go online. It's uh, www.tru, there's no E. So mm -hmm. tru.earth, E-A-R-T-H. There's no .com. It's an, it's an earth domain, so yeah. www.true.earth. Ryan, thanks for being on this episode. For those of you that haven't already supported Ryan and True Earth and the company, trust me, once you get your hands on one of these boxes or packets, you're never gonna buy anything else because he literally <laughs> sent my wife a box and now I don't have to ever think about laundry detergent again because I'm one of his subscribers. Um, so yeah, looking forward to you guys. Thanks for this specific episode and we'll see you in the next one. Talking to Ryan, bringing back some of the original days of when we met in San Diego. Ryan came to me about testing this part about two years ago. He's like, oh, I got this thing that I want to try and test out. What do you think? I said, give it a shot. Now you guys have just seen what he's done with it. These guys are literally a disruptor in the entire market. And I am so excited that you guys got to see this. It's been one phenomenal episode. So I'm really, really excited that you guys spent the time to watch this entire thing. If you guys got the value, do me a favor, go support Ryan's business at true.earth. Like he said, give us a comment on this video, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, because we've got more phenomenal episodes like and epic business builders like Ryan that are gonna be coming up in the next few weeks. So look forward to seeing you very soon.